friends, how are you? This is my first time getting on here and talking to you since we've had the baby. If you missed our birth vlog, Elijah Robert was born February 18th and we have just been soaking in every moment. Today, I thought I would just bring you along and do like a day in the life vlog type video. I've come to the realization these are gonna be the easiest types of videos for me to record with a newborn. Life is kind of chaotic and we are still trying to figure out our routine, but I do wanna get back to filming like my thrift hauls. I know a lot of you found me on here because of my thrift hauls, but I've just come to accept the fact that being a new mom is the stage of life I'm in right now and getting out and thrifting, it might not be quite as easy in the next few weeks. So those videos are gonna be coming up up, but today I just wanted to bring you along with me. I got like eight hours of sleep last night, which is amazing. Now I say that it was choppy because I have to wake up and feed every three hours. So I'm feeling a little bit more refreshed. It's right around 11 o'clock. We just finished feeding. A little guy is up swinging in the bonus room. David's working from home today. And so he's just up there chilling with daddy. And so I'm gonna try to get some stuff done. On the list of things to do is um, declutter my closet. I realize I have so many items in my closet that I never wear and so I have an empty box here. I want to throw some clothes in and take to the thrift store. We had a kitchen designer come and maybe I'll share those plans with you. I think I'm going to start decluttering my closet. So I don't know about you but springtime nicer weather has me in the mood to get rid of things. But yeah let's see what today has in store and see if anything exciting happens. my friends and I do what we call a clothing swap where we all clean out our closets and then we get together and we exchange clothes before taking them to the thrift store. So I'm actually going to sort these into a clothing swap pile and a thrift store pile. The clothing swap is just some items that I think some of my friends might actually like. And then for the thrift store are just items that I don't really see anybody else really wearing. I think I have a pretty good stash here so my closet still looks decently full but pretty happy with this so now I'm just gonna go through and sort it and box everything up. One rule of thumb that I like to do when I'm cleaning out my closets is when I'm unsure about an item I think to myself if I saw this at the store how much would I pay for it and if that's like a dollar then I don't need to keep it. If that's like I would pay 25 bucks for that then yeah, maybe I'll just hang on to it for another season. All this stuff I've had for a while or it's been thrift purchases that I've wore a few times but I just didn't really like end up liking it that much. Even though I still like some of this stuff, I think it's just time to retire it, let somebody else get some love out of it, and then maybe justify me being able to go to the thrift store and buy a few new things for this season. So yeah, let's get to organizing this. So I'm donating a total of 23 pieces. This is all for the thrift store and then this is for our friend's clothing swap. But I feel like that's pretty good, 23 pieces. Some of the stuff you guys are probably seeing because I remember it's from the thrift store. Excited to get rid of this. One of the things that I underestimated about becoming a new parent is just how hungry I would always be between the feedings, I'm like always in the kitchen looking for something to eat. Our church has been so great. They actually did a meal train for us. So we've been getting meals every other day, which has been awesome. I haven't had to cook. I'm just constantly stuffing my face. So I'm gonna get a snack. But as I stand here in the kitchen, I thought I would share our kitchen plans. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we did meet with a cabinet builder and we're thinking about doing all new cabinets in the kitchen. If you've been here for our home renovation videos, you know that our plan was to paint the cabinets. And depending on the cost, that still might be option B, but we got an island quoted and it came back pretty reasonable. So we decided to go ahead and get a quote for all new cabinets and the cabinets are fine. We would definitely try to sell them or donate them. But if you get close to some of them here, let me show you. There's just some wear and tear as you get closer. And yeah, these are just original to the house, the 1960s cabinets. And for considering that they're in pretty good shape, but even when you open them, you can see, especially this one, they would definitely need some work. So that's why we thought it might be better to go ahead and just look at investing in new cabinets rather than trying to salvage them and paint them. And the kitchen is like the heart of the home. And when you go to sell your house, everybody wants to see the kitchen. It's a big selling point. So we thought, you know, while we're doing the island and getting new countertops, 
putting in a backsplash, maybe we should just go ahead and get a quote for a new cabinet. So I'm gonna throw up our inspiration. This is what I showed the cabinet maker. This is like my dream kitchen. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be reality. We're still waiting on getting the quote back, but if it does come to where we have enough money in the budget, this is what I want my kitchen to look like. And I think it would just be beautiful and fit the house, the mid-century look we're going for, and really just add value to the house. I love these white oak cabinets. I just think they're super sleek, super modern modern and yeah would just really tie this whole living kitchen area together let me know if you guys like it in the comments below and if you want to keep up with our house renovation videos make sure that you're subscribed to my channel because i'm going to be doing more room renovation videos come this spring and summer cannot wait to get into those but yeah this is kind of what we're thinking so far for our kitchen plans fingers crossed it all works out <laughs> yeah In case anybody is looking for a good salad, one of the ladies from church brought this to us, an Asian chopped salad kit. So delicious. So I've been eating this like every day. Really, really like it. And I'm definitely gonna be adding this to my grocery list. But he needs to tell you something. He's got something to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that usually means I have a hungry face, but I love you. What do we think of little guy? He's the best. Do we just stare at him all the time? No. Most of the time, though. We just finished nursing, and he usually passes out after we feed. He's a little bit awake right now, but he's doing some yawning, so I think it's only a matter of time before he's asleep. But um, as I rock him, I just thought I would talk to you all. I know I say this a lot. I really do appreciate all the encouragement and all the love and all the prayers that you guys send, and I honestly feel it. And I think as we were giving birth to him, we had just such a pleasant experience and I just thought to myself, you know, we've had so many people praying for us for so long. Probably start crying now because I just look at him and think he's so worth the wait. And another reason I started this channel back when I did was to share our struggle with infertility and our journey to parenthood and our two previous losses. He's just such an answered prayer. and. Um, if anybody is on here watching this that maybe found my channel because of our infertility journey and you're still on the journey, I really, I know how difficult it is and there were many times where we questioned and doubted what God was doing. But now I just look at our precious son and I think it was all worth it and if things would have gone differently, like we wouldn't be sitting here staring at him and we just love him so much and feel so beyond blessed to be able to be parents to him. If you are on that journey, I just want to encourage you to keep going and keep praying and keep seeking. You know, sometimes it seems like prayers aren't being answered, but I want to reassure you that God does hear them. I have so loved being a mother, and I say that knowing that this isn't the first time that I have felt like a mother. As you know, we have done foster care for the last year and a half, two years, and we've had four long-term placements with us. I wanna say something in regards to that. Like, this is obviously the first time we've had a biological child. As soon as we had him, it was instant love. But now I can say with 100% certainty that I know it's possible to love other children who weren't born to you just as much as it is to love biological children. We would do anything for him. But just the other night, David and I were sitting down talking and a song came on that reminded us of little sis who was the youngest of the last sibling set that we had and it's a song that we used to always dance around with her and sing it to her and I just started crying because foster care is so hard and you love these kids just as if they were your own and of course you want what's best for them you want their parents to have another chance it's always beautiful when they're able to go back home but at the same time we grieve the losses of these children and I told David 100% I could love another child just as my own and I know that without a doubt now and so um, I guess maybe somebody on here needs to hear that that you're scared that you would never be able to love another as your own I'm here to say that you can and we still grieve the children that we have even though we are so thankful for him this doesn't feel like the first time that I've been a mom and it's the first time that I've been a mom to a newborn who was born out of me 
but it doesn't seem like the first time I've been a mom. In a way, I think that's beautiful that our hearts are able to love other kids as if they are our own. I just felt like sharing that because I never want to come across now that we have a biological child that the love is superior to that of what we've had for our foster children because that's just not the case. I think being foster parents has kind of made the transition a little bit easier for us. And although the sleepless nights are tough, having him comes without everything that foster care involves. So there's no court dates, there's no counseling sessions, there's no trauma. So in that sense, it's actually been an easier transition for us to have a newborn here. I think it's pretty neat to think that now that we are on both sides of being biological parents and foster parents to know you can love another's child just as your own. If anything, I hope having him makes me a better foster mom in the future. That was just my random thought as I was sitting here rocking him because again, I know some of you might have found my channel because of foster care and we still want to be involved in foster care. We are taking some time off just to settle in with him. We hope that being foster parents or at least being involved in the foster care system somehow, he will grow up seeing what it's like to love those who need a little extra love and who are vulnerable and just need a place to be for a little while. I still just look down at him and I thank God every time I do for this little miracle. Again, thank you all who have prayed for us and supported us along the way. Um, I know I say that in a lot of my videos, but sincerely, we feel those prayers and we're just so appreciative. You guys hear him snoring. <laughs> He's a little bit congested, but they told us that that was pretty common with newborns, so. Anyway, see what the rest of the day holds, but for now, I'm gonna enjoy just rocking my little boy for as long as he will allow me to rock him. I love summertime. I love our baby. I love the smell of fresh cut grass. I love when my hair does this. <laughs> <laughs>